Sharif Maan Rahim. Uh, this is another paper six which I'm solving for you all so that uh, these are the latest ones in June 22 and November 22. Though they do not fit the bill of the new syllabus, but the new syllabus is not very different. So revising these papers will help you in the ATP paper, which will be now called paper four. It will not be called paper six uh, from 2023. As you all know, this paper is for one hour. And this is for... How many marks? It's for 40 marks. So one hour, 40 marks. And you have to try and score at least 30 out of 40. Now I want you to understand the grade thresholds. Now the total marks of 40. If you got a 28 out of 40, that was an A grade. If you got a 25, that was a B grade in this component. 22 C grade. 19 D grade and a 17. So basically 17 was the passing marks. You had to just get 17 out of 40 to get uh, a pass in this uh, paper. But of course, all the papers are then added together and that's how the grade is finally established. But you should try to get, as I said, at least 30 marks. You should at least get 30 or above. 32 would be better. So that if your other papers are not so good, you can at least, uh, you know, your grade can be helped through this paper. This is a very important paper and it's very easy to score in this paper. So coming to the paper, let's start the paper. Answer all questions in the space is provided. There's no choice in this paper. Number one, some students investigated the effect of temperature on the rate of photosynthesis in pond weed. A pond weed, a plant that lives in water. The students set up the apparatus shown. So you look at everything. There's a gas, there's bubbles of gas, and then there's a test tube. Uh, there is a beaker, there is water in it, there is a glass funnel upside down, there is a small wooden block to support the funnel and then there is a water plant which is called the pond weed. To measure the rate of photosynthesis, the students counted the number of bubbles of gas produced in 5 minutes. They started the investigation by measuring the temperature of the water in the beaker. Use the thermometer in the diagram below to read the first temperature taken. Record the temperature in the table on page 4 and complete the heading. So you can see this is 10. So let's look at this now. This is 10 and this is 20. And you see divisions here. So then this would be 11 and then this would be 11, 11, 11 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and then 20. But it says measure the temperature. So this temperature here is 12 degrees Celsius. So we had to write degrees Celsius here and we had to write 12 here. This would get us the two marks. Now it says the student recorded the number of bubbles of gas produced by the pond weed for five minutes using a tally chart. They replaced the water with warmer water, measured its temperature and again counted the number of bubbles of gas produced by the pond weed for five minutes. They recorded the results as before. The student's tally chart is shown in the diagram. And the students then transferred their results to the table. Complete the table by adding the number of bubbles to the rate of photosynthesis column. That's two marks. So on 50, you can see, you see when you write this like this, one, two, three, four, and then you do this. This is actually equal to five. It's called a tally chart. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 35. Seven into five is 35 if your math is very poor. And then three. So 35 plus three is equal to 38. And this one is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 1. So this is 26. So you see this, when we write, when we do this 1, 2, 3, 4, then this is 5. So this is called a tally chart. So it would be 38 and 26. So you've completed this. This is something which you would do if you had to take the practical exam. So they're testing you if you know that skill or not. Now coming to the B part of the question, B1, construct a line graph of the data in the table on the grid. Join your points with ruled straight lines. Now this is the one that we have to plot here. So always the first column, this one always goes on the x-axis. Please remember the first column in the table, this first column I'm talking about, this always goes on the x-axis and this are naturally 
would go on the y axis then so i have written that down you must write the whole label the axis temperature in degrees celsius and this whole story rate of photosynthesis number of bubbles in 5 minutes you must write all of this in the correct wordings no abbreviations and then you must use the entire grid now how did i decide to take this scale because i looked here and i said the highest is 38 so then i said okay then we should go up to 40 here and this highest was 60 so the 60 must come right at the end so the 60 comes here and the 40 comes here this is how you spread the uh, because the scale is not given to us but we are expected to give you a mark if you use the whole scale you see the four marks for this there are four marks here the four marks are for number 1 temperature on the x axis and both axes fully labeled the second mark is linear scales and value at origin and good use of the grid so you wrote here zero here and then you wrote here zero here for the y axis as well so uh, you've labeled it every 2 cm so we've written 10 then you've written 10 here and so on and so forth then you plotted the six points correctly so this is six points 1 2 3 4 5 6 so six points plotted correctly and then you join them with ruled lines and no extrapolation extrapolation means you don't extend it you just join the points as you can see i haven't been doing a very good job of it so you join it very correctly with a straight with a with a, the ruler and you join like there's a point here and a point here so you put a ruler and you join it straight but here you don't you don't you do not extend it here do not extrapolate means do not extend it do not extend it here either so you do not extend it on the two sides and that is called extrapolation so you don't extend it in any way and you just join the points which were given to you on the graph then part 2 of the question use your graph to estimate the number of bubbles produced in 5 minutes at 25 degrees celsius so this would be 25 degrees celsius so then you draw a line on it and you see where it is going to go so you get the line here and here it goes here and then you read off that side and this is 28 bubbles per minute so number of bubbles is 28 and that is you got you see why is it two marks you got to understand why is it two marks one is for this that you do this line on the graph if you do this line on the graph when you got one mark for that and one mark is for the 28 so if you did not draw the line on the graph and you wrote 28 well you're only going to get one mark so one mark for the line on the graph it says show your working on the graph that means the student has read this and he or she has done this working on the graph so that is why you get the two marks for this point then it says use your data and your graph to describe the effect of temperature on the rate of photosynthesis i have told you many times describe is no biology so you just have to give me a description look at the three marks so the describe is going to be what rate increases with temperature up to 50 degrees celsius now let's look at the graph again as the temperature increases the rate increases but up to 50 degrees celsius right up to here and then what happens then levels of it sort of then up to 50 degrees and then you could have said levels of or the rate of increase slows or you could say uh, slower between 30 to 50 the rate is much slower between 30 and 50 degrees celsius or you could have also said is that number one rate increases with the temperature up to 50 degrees celsius and then decreases between 50 and 60 you could have said levels of or you could have said between 30 and 50 so there are few four possible answers and any three of these would have got you your 3 out of 3 so rate increases with temperature up to 50 degrees celsius and then decreases so this would get you your 3 out of 3 very easy 3 out of 3 which nobody should be really losing out describes are very easy and you must be able to do these more and more describe you do the better it becomes then coming to d1 explain why measuring the volume of gas produced instead of counting the bubbles would have been a better method and that's three marks so there's three marks why would that have been better because the bubble size varies now if you're saying 10 bubbles and another student saying five bubbles they're probably the same volume because the bubble size is very variable maybe bigger bubbles or smaller bubbles 
so uh, you can miscount the bubbles if they are very fast and so it is a more accurate when you calculate the volume it's more accurate or more precise now these are the words you don't say they are more good or they are better or they are reliable no 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 please use the word precise or accurate so why measuring the volume is a good idea is because the bubble size can be very variable two small bubbles then two large bubbles then one small bubble and one medium bubble so bubble size varies uh you can miscount the bubbles if they are very fast or precise uh, volume will be of course a much better method so bubble size varies number 2 miscount the bubbles number 3 precise and accurate volume can be measured in this way number 2 in this investigation the gas was collected in a test tube name a piece of apparatus that could replace the test tube to collect and measure the volume of gas released well you could have used a gas syringe you could have used a gas syringe or you could have used a graduated test tube or a measuring cylinder now they are asking you these things because they want you to understand whether you know which are the laboratory apparatuses that we use so you could have used a measuring cylinder or you could have used a graduated test tube graduated test tube means a test tube which has got marks on it which tells the volume on it so this is called a graduated test tube and coming to part e one of the question design an investigation based on the apparatus shown in the diagram in a to find the effect of using different masses of pond weed on the rate of photosynthesis so you give me at least three different masses say 100 grams 150 grams and 200 grams then same species of pond weed then the same volume of water then lamp at the same distance or the same light intensity then same temperature and then we measure it at whatever time you want to say is you know say measure every 5 minutes or a number of bubbles produced per unit time so regular time intervals for observation so you measure the rate of photo, the number of bubbles produced every 5 minutes and uh, and then you compare the number of bubbles for each mass so was it different for the 50 g was it different for the 100 g and so you just compare them you don't have to know it whether it will increase or decrease but you just have to say okay compare the number of bubbles for each mass because we want to study investigate does the mass affect the rate of photosynthesis are there more bubbles when the mass is increased or are there less bubbles so they're not asking you for an answer you don't have to give me an answer you just have to design an investigation they aren't asking you design an in investigation and give me the conclusions and the results no they're not asking you that so design an investigation now whenever they say design an investigation based on the apparatus shown in the diagram then you must go back to the apparatus and look at it now what is the title range of at least three different masses that means you going to change this pond weed first time you going to take 100 grams of the pond weed then you going to take 150 grams so you going to change the mass of the pond weed range of at least three different masses so three different masses you must give me three if the temperature give me three temperatures if something else give three of those three at least five i say but three is fine for o levels a levels we say five then the same type of pond weed then you added water to it so whenever there is a liquid you must say the same volume because in one you put less volume in the other you put more volume that would of course upset the whole apparatus because this would be wrong in one of the in 100 grams you added 200 ml water and in the 150 grams you added 50 ml water well that would be wrong so same volume of water and then light should be at the lamp should be at the same distance so if you have placed a lamp here then this lamp should be at the same distance which means that the same light intensity and you should also have put a heat shield in front of it same temperature so you maintain the temperature you keep this in a water bath and you maintain the temperature at whatever say you maintaining it at 30 degrees celsius then you regular time until so same total time so for 100 g you measured the bubbles in 5 minutes now for 150 g also you will measure in 5 minutes and for 200 g also you will measure in 5 minutes and you compare the number of bubbles for each mass so three different masses same species of pond weed same volume of water same light intensity same temperature maintained same total time 
and compare the number of bubbles for each mass. Now coming to the last part of the question, uh, predict the effect of increasing the mass of pond bead on the rate of photosynthesis. Yeah, it would increase. Why would it increase? More cells, more chloroplasts, more chlorophyll, more light absorbed, more oxygen produced. Mass means more cells in that. 100 grams, 150 grams will have more cells in it. More cells, more chlorophyll, more chloroplasts, more light trapped, more light absorbed, more oxygen produced. Then the last part, glucose produced in photosynthesis is stored as starch in the leaf. Describe how you would test a green leaf for starch and how you would know that starch was present. Well, first of all, you remove the chlorophyll. That means you decolorize the leaf. And if you remember this, we've done this in the chapter on photosynthesis, is that you boil it in ethanol and that will decolorize the leaf. And then you add iodine. And when you add iodine and if the color changes to, iodine is brown in color and the changes to blue-black. So from brown, the iodine will become blue-black. The leaf will become blue-black. And that will tell you that starch is present. So this was for three marks. And these are the three mark scheme points. So number one, decolorize the leaf. Or you could have said boil it in ethanol. Add iodine solution. Uh, you can write solution. You should write solution, in fact. I'd add iodine solution and the color changes from brown to blue-black. Now coming to question number two, the photomicrograph shows a section through a plant root. You can see the magnification is 150 times. This is something which you must note. And then they marked cells A and B, and then there's some C and D as well on it. So look at it very carefully. The space below make a large drawing of the cell labeled A as it appears in the photomicrograph. Draw a line on your drawing to label the cell wall W. Now I've done that for you. And it's a sort of very easy thing. You just draw what you're seeing. So a double line to show the cell wall. And either that should touch it or it should have gone from here inside. Then also it was correct. So all lines drawn near, clear and continuous, no shading. Got you one mark, roughly circular shape with two outer layers. Diameter at least six centimeter. That means there is a minimum. If you draw a very small diagram, you'll probably lose a mark for that. So just draw a big diagram, cover nearly the whole space which is available to you. So uh, diameter at least six centimeter, four structures shown in the lower half and correct position and contents indicated in at least two of these. And then the correct label for W, line ends on the outer layer or between the two outer layers. So this is how you have to label it. You have to be very carefully how you label it. Otherwise, you can miss a mark. Like, for instance, if you label the line goes inside, well, this will be wrong. So this would get you your five out of five. All lines drawn clear, clean, and continuous, no shading. Clean, continuous, no shading. Roughly circular, two outer layers. Diameter at least six centimeter means you draw the space available to you. This is the space available to you. Just fill it all up. Four structures shown uh, in the lower half. So four structures shown as you could see here. There are four structures here. You see here and this is the diagram that we are supposed to do. So you can see there's one here, two here, three here and this is the fourth structure here. Then coming to the B part of the question, complete the table by describing three visible differences. What you can see. Visible means what you can see between cell A and cell B. Let's go back. Now, if you look at this is cell A and uh, this is cell B. So cell A is more rounded and cell B is more oval shaped or egg shaped. Cell A, uh, cell contents in A are present and there are no cell contents in cell B. And the cell wall is thinner in A and the cell wall is thicker in B. So you can see this, the cell wall here this is a very thick cell wall. This is actually a xylem. This is very thin. This is a very thin cell wall. This is a very thin cell wall. So the differences were shape A is uh, cell A is more rounded, the cell B is oval shaped, cell contents in A, no cell contents in A, uh, in B, sorry, cell wall is thinner in A and thicker in B. So this is how you complete a table, you compare the same points. You say, okay, if the shape, then you're comparing the shape, round shape, oval shape. If you're saying cell contents, you don't talk of two different things. 
you're talking of a cell wall in one case you talk of a cell wall then you talk of a cell membrane no that would be wrong so cell wall thinner cell wall thicker you have to be using these words thinner thicker round shape oval shape present absent cell contents present absent now coming to c part of the question and that's the last part of the question uh, draw a straight line on cell b on the photomicrograph on page 7 to join cd measure and record the length of this line length of the line cd and the answer should be in millimeter please do not give it to me in centimeter use your measurements in c1 to calculate the actual diameter of cell b and give your answer to two decimal places space for working and this is three marks would be very sad if you lost those three marks and please remember this also for two marks now what were these two marks for the the answer was very easy it was 12 mm but the important thing was the mark was that you drew this line here on this if you didn't draw this line drawn on the diagram because it said here draw a straight line on cell b on the photomicrograph on page 7 to join cz measure and record the length so if the why were there two marks for this there's not two marks for writing 12 mm mm the units were given in the question in fact there was no mark for writing the units the units were given here but what you had to do is you had to draw that line so you had to draw that line here this is the line that was expected of you so just let me rub this all off and then this was the line that you had to draw and if you didn't draw this well you didn't get that one mark then how, what did you have to do then you had to draw, divide 12 by what 150 Why 150? That was the magnification. So what were the three marks for? How would you get your three marks? The first mark scheme point was for the fact that you divided 12 by 150. The measurement in C1, which you did here, this is the one, and you divided by 150 was 150 was the magnification, and then you gave me the correct answer to two decimal places. Now where is the third mark? Well, if you wrote this. because here it was written millimeter so this was 12 mm divided by 150 so one mark for this one mark for this and one mark for the units and i know this a majority of the students did not write the units because you are a you are a generation which is just careless you just are very very careless so that is why you lose marks on this so it would be sad if you didn't write the units because everybody knows the units you knew the units here the units were given here in the earlier part of the question the units were given here 12 mm so this is very sad if you do this mistake this finishes this paper and thank you very much and please concentrate on this paper this is a very important paper and you must do very well in it in the upcoming exams best of luck and thank you very much